Hey everyone, this is George Coase. Welcome back to another highlighted edition of the Innovators Mindset Podcast for the month of September 2024. I actually have a little new camera set up. I don't know if you've been watching the last few episodes or the ones coming up. Uh, I record them all at different times. The um, lighting's been off, things have been breaking, whatever. I, I always try to make this as good of experience as possible and I, I'm still trying to figure this out. This is the thing that's really important to me is... Um, not starting for perfection, but continuously being a learner. Because in our world, you know, it's it's almost impossible to become an expert in anything. The more I learn, the more I realize I don't actually know. So I want to continuously be a great learner because that's something that no one can take away from me. I can only judge that for myself. Am I willing to try new things? Am I willing to do new stuff? And I, I've really been thinking about that in my progression over the years. And I just wrote a, a reflection post. I do these weekly photo dumps where I talk about some things I've learned. And one of the things I, I shared was a quote from actually uh, Dale Carnegie, Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I love this quote. And this seems so relevant in our world right now. It says, they remember that other people may be totally wrong, but they don't think so. Don't condemn them. Any fool can do that. Try to understand them. Only wise tolerant exceptional people even try to do that and the reason I love that quote from Dale Carnegie and I think it really resonates with me is because in my journey as an educator as an administrator and doing some of the work that I am doing working with schools and districts all over the world I really try to understand that to get people to embrace change we often try to convince them of something we try to convince them to our way of thinking. And I know that if you didn't hear what I was saying before, what I would try to do is say the same thing, just a little bit louder. And if you didn't get it at that time, I might say it even louder. And that doesn't work. In fact, it probably pushes people away. The reality of it is that if you really want people to move forward, you can't change them. They have to change themselves. But part of that process is, do you lead by listening or by shouting? And oftentimes when you listen, and you listen not just to hear their perspectives, but with the willingness that you might be wrong as well, I think that changes you. We live in the society, we live in this world, in education, there's like these wars, right? The literacy wars, the uh, innovation versus the basic wars, where it seems like basically you're on one side or the other. And what I've really realized over time is that the ideas are somewhere in the middle, that... I actually don't believe that it's all about innovation. I really believe in the basics. And I think that if you actually focus on really developing the basics, that's when we get to that innovation. It's it's not one or the other. It's somewhere in that between. So when we actually listen to people, not only does it hopefully get them to see a different perspective, get them to really think about why they're so adamant about what they're sharing, but we're open to that change as well. There's many times where I went in thinking one thing when I walked into a school, when I walked into um, a district, and I thought something different when I left because I'm open to that learning. If we talk about the importance of being a learner, that means we have to evolve in our thinking. We have to be open to changing. If you want to change others, they have to see that you're willing to change yourself. And that's why I wanted to share this today. And hopefully um, the lighting is a little bit better. The camera angle is a bit better. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, but I, I always want to continuously grow. And the only way we do that is if we're willing to learn ourselves, but also be open to learning from others, even those ones that you're actually sometimes charged um, to change yourself. And if you didn't get anything out of this, I promise you, you'll get something out of my amazing guests who took time out of their busy schedules to join me um, this month on the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Welcome back. One of the things that you said when we were kind of prepping for this, you said about how important, you know, it is to build relationships with your community. And really, you know, as you kind of evidence in that, you know, that answer, really knowing who you serve and kind of figuring out there, how do you, why do you see that as so important? And like, what are some of the things you do as a principal to connect with your, your staff and your students? I know I had a, a mentor tell me that we're in the business of customer service. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to inconvenience anybody, is it inconvenience us. Mm. And so if you go into 
whatever store that you choose to shop at, you know, it's, it's better to go where you feel comfortable. I know some people say, well, I don't like Walmart. I say, well, go to Kroger or go to Target, right. you know, go where you feel comfortable. And it's the same thing with schools. Go where you feel comfortable. It's almost like cheers. Go a place where right. everybody knows your name. Right. And, uh, and I know one of my goals is to learn all my kids' names. Uh, so one thing that I do, and it it helps, it does not, it's not a perfect system, but we have school IDs. And I, I print every kid's ID. If they need a replacement, I print it and with a picture on it. So that way I can learn the kids' names, learn their middle names, give them a nickname. Mm. Uh, and so in the mornings, we... You know, and I, we, we like to play music. We play music in the morning at car drop off and I have a microphone. And so right. if, if, you, if your parents drop you off, I say, George, good morning. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it, it embarrassed the kids some, but yeah. some smile and some parents love it. They'll have their phones out recording, uh, things like that. But that. if you can address somebody uh, by name and like you asked, make sure that you say somebody's name correctly. Yeah, so that that means something, especially when you have a name. You're like, my name is Dondre. I get called DeAndre or, mm -hmm. or or something like that. But if you take the time out to, you know, understand me and know my name and, and then know where I come from, know what I like, you know, it's it builds a, a relationship. And that way uh, you can have different conversations. And if I have a kid that I have I have given a nickname to. I've mm. talked to their parents or I've gone to their house. You know, I, I can talk to that kid differently than a teacher who's having right. trouble with this kid. Uh, I might be able to you know, talk a little rougher to them or pull them in and they may listen to me more. And I think it goes the same way with teachers. Um, there's been mm. times where if a t I notice a teacher's having a tough time, I'll, I'll, I'll text or call her husband. Say, hey, mm. everything OK? Or uh, if somebody has passed in their family. I know I had a teacher a few years ago, her, her mother-in-law passed. And so I reached out to her husband and say, just check it on you, make sure you're okay. I know, you know, just showing a little uh, empathy to their situation. And, you know, I think that helped yeah. my teacher, even though I was reaching out to her husband. Yeah, that you know, I, I, first of all, you're gonna probably get in trouble. You're gonna probably get kicked out of Arkansas because you said that you can go somewhere else other than Walmart. Isn't that like? <laughs> did you know, I supposed to say that like Walmart, uh, Arkansas is like Walmart, isn't it? Not? Yeah, it is. It's the you're Walmart. Gonna you're gonna be trouble. You're gonna be trouble. I'll I'll see if I edit that out. If I don't edit it out, you don't have a job. I know what happens. So hey, I, I shop at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. Well, you guys can't say anything different now. That's for sure. So, um. <laughs> That, you know, the, I, one of the things I love about this podcast, I know somebody's going to hear that and they're like, I'm totally doing that with our like school drop off because a lot of people dread the school drop off. Right. And if you, so like, it's probably not as smooth as anyone would like it to be, but at least if you can kind of make it fun, there's a real power in this. Uh, one of my favorite books I read over the last year or so was uh, unreasonable hospitality by Will Gadara. He talks about um, he basically says we're all in the customer service business and he's talking about from the perspective of uh, a, a restaurant, but I'll tell you that was like that book has had one of the biggest impacts on me on educational leadership after we read it. So what what do you hope it changes and improves like the impact? What, what do you see happening if people kind of not, not just like kind of fake read it? <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, 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 happen, but actually like read it take the lessons, apply them. What do you see kind of the, the outcome of that could be for a school or a district? Well, first I want to say, you know, I'm totally guilty of fake reading books too. <laughs> right. um, but here's the thing about this book that's really nice is you can literally flip to the sections and get to the quick and dirty strategies quite nicely for discussions for, you know, PD or for meetings. So it's accessible that way, which is great. However, I think what I really want people to take away is that even through your example there, George, like you can make little microscopic changes to the way that you run your school, the classroom, your overall district. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like, we need to rip the system apart and we're building, like it can be as simple as like, yeah. maybe this year we're gonna do an onboarding video. 
maybe this year I'm going to spend a little bit more time uh, meeting with my paraprofessionals that work with me so that we can have a seamless transition. Maybe it looks like you know, closing the recognition gap because 23% of most employees don't feel appreciated and, you know, putting a note card on, on someone's desk when I think about something that they've done for me, that's, that's fantastic or whatever, that's added value. And it doesn't have to be crazy, but sometimes we kind of get roadblocked or we get jammed when we think about this stuff and it's actually really accessible. So my hope is people take one or two strategies and work it into their culture starting Monday. And then they can see a tremendous difference because when you think about the trajectory of like, say an airplane, in order to end up in a completely different city or continent, an airplane really, if they're taking a pretty long journey, they're doing like a 1% shift in their trajectory, right? Either, you know, North or whatever. Right. And so I think what you have to do is really look at these changes as small incremental changes consisting of consistency over time, you know, like that's really what it's about. Well, and that's, you know, a lot of times when I do workshops or groups, they'll say like, oh, there's so much like what, like what you do. I said, just pick one thing. And if you pick yeah. one thing and you consistently do it and then you, you get really good at it and then you do another thing within a year, your, your classroom, your school could look totally different. Right. So like, but don't, if you try to do everything, you'll do nothing. But if you do one yeah. thing, everything can change. So I think that's it's like working out, right? It's like, I know you're a Absolutely. big gym guy and, and all of that. It's like, it's like just show up consistently every week, a few times a week and do the same things and do some progressive like overload and challenge yourself a little bit more each day. And the difference that you'll have in six months to a year is incredible versus if you're like setting out on day one and you want to run a marathon, like forget it. You're going to burn yourself out, get injured, all the things. I was accused of being on steroids this past week. So I was pretty happy about it. <laughs> I think that's a win, isn't it? It's always, sometimes we see people that are doing really, really well. Um, they seem to be doing well, seem to have everything going on that's really, really good. And we just ignore them. We just assume they're good. My little golden rule I have is if I think something good about somebody, whether I saw them yesterday or I haven't talked to them in 10 years, I make sure that they know that. Uh, an example, I remember probably... 10 ish years ago, I spoke at a conference in Nebraska and the person who was organizing it was so amazingly kind to me. And I actually had an inquiry about speaking at another event in Nebraska. And I said, Hey, do you know this person? She's awesome. Like, and they're like, Oh yeah, she still works there. Like she still works for that group. I said, really? So I actually, he found her phone number. I like, you know, Googled her, found her phone number. And I called her. I said, Hey, do you remember me? And she's like, yeah, of course. And I said, I just wanted to tell you, I was thinking about you or sharing about how kind you are. And I didn't want that just to go to that person. I wanted you to know it, that I still remember you all these years later. I think about that. And I don't know if it made an impact, but we just, sometimes we see something that that's really, really good. We have a perception of it, but we don't know what's going on. We really don't know what's going on. So if you think something good about someone, share it with them. And, it, and if you can't do that, that's kind of a reflection on you a little bit. And you know, there's an insecurity there. Sometimes we see people doing really great stuff and we feel that if we commend them, somehow that makes us less. But it really kind of makes you more if you have the ability to commend someone that if you can share something. It, it ma matters to me, you know, like my my own daughters, sometimes uh, I want, like one of the things I really teach them is really that, hey, you, your sister does something really good, you cheer her on, you don't get jealous of it. And that's something that happens in education. We see people some doing good and somehow it makes us look less, but really we've all contributed to that. And when you actually, you know, lift people up, you are part of their success. So just wanted to share that. So again, that one, no matter how happy or sad your colleagues or students seem, don't hesitate to share a kind word or action. Uh, I actually wrote this tweet in that part as well. You never know what anyone's going through. So if you think of something nice about a person, say it. Don't ever let an opportunity pass to make someone's day. So I just really kind of think about who's the source that's coming from? Is this someone I aspire to, to be like, and how is that beneficial? So those three quotes um, really resonated uh, with me and really kind of like, I use it. It's not like, I, it's, they're not like good quotes. They're quotes that I heard them and it, something clicked. So just something clicked in me in that day. And so I, I, I guess I share this with you all because, um, I want, I, I, I didn't want to just share the stories from them, but I, maybe you have those moments in your life too. And, um, to kind of think about that. So maybe, you know, write it. I'd love to, you know, if you're in 
watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this, go over to YouTube, write in the comments. Like what's a, a, a moment or a sentence that changed your life? I'd love to hear that um, from now. But I'll, I'll give you one more that's like a little a bonus one. And it, it's this one. Um, sometimes I get really upset about things and I'm really bothered in the moment. I, I try to kind of, I know that sounds weird, kind of step out of my body. Just kind of take a step back. And I'm, I ask myself, like, will this matter, like, five, five years from now? Like, what I'm really bothered by and kind of seems like the end of the world, in five years, will this matter? And 99% of the time, it won't, right? You'll, like, the ne- even, even if you, five weeks will bug you. Five days. Some of the stuff that you get, not you, you as in George, because I'm looking at myself on the screen here. <laughs> Some of the things I get really upset about, I've learned that I'm like, yeah, like in two days, I wouldn't care. So, so if I'm not going to care in two days, why do I even care right now? And so I think it just gives me perspective. I'm really trying to embrace that Trevor Moad idea of uh, neutral thinking. Like, and I'm not saying situations aren't bad or anything like that, but like, okay, so this is probably not going to bug me, but can I figure this out right now? What can I actually do with this moment to make my life better? So that idea of like, will this moment matter five years from now? Um, and you can kind of pull back five weeks, five days. And if it doesn't, typically it's an easier way to deal with things. So that's kind of something I've really kind of learned over um, the last couple of years. Anyways, I want to share those three quotes with you. I've been trying to do some more, um, some of these like solo podcasts. Uh, they seem to um, connect with people in a different way. I love talking to guests, but it's just a good way for me to reflect, kind of talk some things out, share some ideas. Um, and to really kind of push my own learning. I, one of the things I, I'm really passionate about is I don't speak at events um, unless I've either written written the idea before or I've, um, I've talked about it in a podcast because it helps me kind of articulate and really kind of think deeply about it. I don't want to just say things for the sake of saying things. I really want some thought behind why I'm saying that and why it matters. 